We're here at the iBox gym with the British welterweight champion Johnny Garton. Uh, Johnny, you know, we've got news today. We finally got in, well, finally, but we've got an opponent announced for your title defence at the Albert Hall. Yeah, I've got uh, Chris Jenkins. There was rumours about I'd have Chris. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good, tough fight. I'm looking forward to it. Might be a fight with a bit of claret on the old canvas, mightn't it? Yeah, well, we both cut easy, so uh, yeah, I'm putting my money on it. Now, Chris, I mean, he's. Um, He's fought for the British title before at Lightwell. I remember having him two epics against Tyrone Nurse. And what we do know about him, he's a tough man. Very tough. You know, he's been down here sparring before. Uh, even Liam Williams come down. And uh, me and him had a very good spot. It's very tough. And, um, so I expect the same on the night. Um, it's going to be a tough fight. It's very energetic. He's a, he's a bit of a crazy fella. So uh, it's mm. going to be good. Not too much technical stuff involved? No, we're always working on technique. Um, can't keep plodding forward there. I've done the last couple of fights. We know I need to work on things, and we have been. And I think you might see something a bit different from me on this fight. You're going to start listening, eh? I don't know about that much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're the most un box type fighter there is, to be fair, aren't you? Uh, yeah, you've got to say that, yeah. You've sort of broke, <laughs> broken the box <laughs> mould. I've broken the mould, yeah. But um, I'm still I'm bringing the titles back, so that's the main thing. Absolutely. I mean, for someone who sort of com often says a southern area you thought was your ceiling, I mean, have you sat back and reflected on the fact that you've now got that Lonsdale belt in your house? Yeah, I have. Uh, as I say, I still have to pinch myself every now and then to believe it. But, um, you know, the aim now is to try and push on and see how far we can go and just want to push on and fight wherever I can. So when you come into it, your genuine expectations were to, to fight for a southern area and hopefully win it? Well, I didn't even think I'd get that far. My aim was obviously to get 5-0 and oh then work on that and then I thought hopefully we can fight for a southern area. And uh, when it came off, we won it, defended it and then pushed on. So now that's what I want to do with this. Do you think it probably helps coming in with low expectations and then everything sort of after is a bonus? For some people, for me it is, because uh, I like to prove people wrong and uh, I like to work hard. So for me personally, yeah. Other people, I think they need to believe they're at the top and that put, that's what drives them but for me it works perfectly for me keeps me grounded as well do you think having that outlook maybe leads to people possibly underestimating you i think everyone underestimates me all the time i think gary did i think when i boxed uh adam battle he did you know the, the amount of titles of uh, box for and the amount of people i've boxed i think a lot of people have always underestimated me and um he yeah, always seemed to surprise them Partly it might be because publicly you play yourself down so much. Yeah, I don't know if I play myself down. I just think I'm an honest person, and that's you know that's what it is. I'm always honest, and you know if people want to think I'm playing myself down, let them, them think that. First defence of the British title that you won so memorably against Gary. What are your sort of off the top of your head your intentions? going forward if you manage to beat Chris Jenkins? I mean, are you looking to go down the Brad Road of taking ownership or are you just looking to go where maybe the purses are, which is nothing wrong with that? What's your plans? You know, uh, I would have liked to have won the British title outright, but in hindsight, I'm probably going to go for the purses and push on for more money and uh, try and maybe get a European title. You know, I'm not getting no younger. I'm 31 there. I haven't got... I don't know how long I've got left in this sport, so yeah, I want to make some money and yeah. So you're calling out Kerman Laraja? If he wants it, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> there is no shortage of fights on the domestic scene at Welterweight, and they probably will be good ones that might br bring in a few bob. Yeah, uh, well, there's loads uh, around me at the moment, and you know, I'm, as I said, I'm happy to fight whoever. I just want to, but if that don't happen, then I'll push on and maybe they can fight me for a European. How have you? sort of adjusted to well, probably something you haven't experienced before but now you are the champion your name is all of a sudden on people's lips and they're calling you out has that been a bit strange after being <laughs> yourself been chasing fights for so long yeah it's strange but you know i'm never gonna be short of fights now so i'm enjoying it and i just go on about my normal day really let's take you back to take you back to the beginning if you like what sort of you know amateur amateur record did you have i believe i had about 30, 35 fights, lost about 10, maybe a few more. So it weren't the greatest. I was just, I was even worse as an amateur, I was even more of a slugger. So uh, I used to just have a tear up for three rounds. And then I knew, coming turning pro, I needed to change. So um, yeah, I remember speaking to Al, and Al weren't 
overly clean because he knew I got a uh, cane sorry because he knew I got hit too much but I knew I was the right coach and um, I just kept chipping away at him and kept coming back and annoying him and here we are. Did you ever think you'd get to the point of making a living from it? Never, no. When you entered the professional scene I presume it was like on the sort of a uh, ticket deal, small halls, that sort of thing? Yes, yeah, most of my career, even well up to about two years ago it was all ticket deals, if you don't sell tickets you don't fight, so uh, you want little money, so I've, I've not really earned any money in this sport, so um, that's why I'm chasing the purses now. Does that ever get disheartening? Massively, but I love the sport, I love boxing, so um, I always had my job to fall back on, so I was always earning money through work, coming for the gym, so um, it wasn't nothing new really, but um, at times when you do see everyone doing well and earning big paydays, it, it is a bit of a kick in the teeth, yeah. What did you do for a living? I was a mechanic. Car mechanic? Yeah. Is that something you could obviously go back to, I guess? Isn't it? No, I ain't going back to cars. <laughs> I can't stand them. <laughs> I presume your career sort of took an upward curve, I suppose, when you got to fight for the um, international title that you fought for at the Copper Box. I mean, that was a that turned into a bit of a war as well, didn't it? Yeah, well, I just got signed by Frank then. Um, that was another fight they didn't put, they didn't show it on TV. And then, where it was such a good fight, they actually showed it back on uh, the Box Nation show. And then from there, I think everyone started taking interest in me now. You probably came from behind in that fight, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, I was struggling in that fight, yeah. <laughs> what happened to that title? I felt it got stripped, from what I believe. What, for not defending it? Yeah, yeah, I felt well, I was out of the ring for a bit, they stripped me. You know, it's when you look back now, when you think, how long you waited for this British title thing because you were waiting on your own teammate. Does all the, the wait seem worthwhile now? Yeah, 100%. You know, uh, probably makes it more, more enjoyable. You know, you uh, appreciate it a lot more. And I think when I won it, I think it showed in the whole team how much it meant to everyone, especially Brad. He was the first person in the ring. So he probably like say, sent you his laundry bill. <laughs> but, um, just finally... What is it going to mean, you know, for you and your your people to step out of the Albert Hall in South Kensington? I mean, we were there last week. I mean, it is, it's an inspiring venue, isn't it? Uh, it's a breathtaking venue. You know, it's a you can't. It's not to me. It don't seem like a boxing venue. It's too nice. Um, yeah, it's lovely, and I can't wait to get out there and for obviously for my supporters to see it. Johnny, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.